In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We don't know her name. We don't even really know what house she lived in, her address. All we know is that she was bent over, and all she could see were her feet. She walked around all during her life for the last 18 years, crippled in body, mind, and probably spirit. If you can imagine trying to fit in with a family, trying to navigate the streets where she lived, buy food, even just trying to bathe. We have to look at this story in the Bible almost as if it's an outline for us today. It's almost like the perfect outline for Christ in our life. And I'll tell you why. Because I think a lot of us come to church. There's a lot of people out there in the world bent over, crippled from their past, from their upbringing, from their childhood, from addiction, from not feeling loved, from loneliness, from a low economic stature. Many of us, many of us come here broken, looking for answers. And this woman comes to the synagogue where Jesus is preaching. We don't even know if she knew he was preaching that morning. She came in, and I'm assuming, and I would like to assume for the past 18 years, that Sabbath morning gave her sustenance. She could hear the word of God. And lo and behold, Jesus is present and reaches out to her and calls her out. She does not have to go to him. He reaches out to her. So this morning I'd like to remind you that you come here and you don't necessarily have to reach out, but God is already reaching out to you in this place. Jesus immediately says, you're healed, goes over to her, lays hands on her, and she stands upright. Now, a miracle, yes. And what do the, the lawmakers, the Pharisees say, the temple masters, you can't do this on the Sabbath. The law. And many times we come to church in any circumstance, there's always kind of these laws, these, these rituals. I'm even guilty myself. I'll tell the acolytes, you can't wear sandals. Don't, uh uh-uh. Not on my altar, you won't wear sandals. Can you imagine? I have to bite my tongue sometimes. Oh, you can't do that in here. I'm one of them. And I oftentimes have to stop myself from saying, I don't care if you wear sandals. I don't want you dancing around for the devil in here either, but, you know, we've got to have some practicality. But, of course, they have their doctrine and their rituals and their laws and And Jesus points out to them, well, you'll go home and untie your your ox, but you're not going to allow a woman be healed. But my most favorite part of the story is so hidden and so close into this, this story that I think it's another outline for us this morning, is those actual leaders of the synagogue go, you people come some other time to be healed. I don't know why that just cracks me up. Don't come to the church to be healed. There's six other days when this place is empty. You come then. I mean, it's crazy making people what the church sometimes does or the institution does, right? Don't come here to get healed. Not the place. Well, I'm telling you this morning, you can come here to be healed. Because our world also needs to be healed. Our world right now is bent over paralyzed, crippled. And we need people to be like Jesus and just shout out, I see you. Be healed. Now, I'm not talking about some televangelist, although, you know, we could make a lot of money at that. But we can reach out and touch people at their core and say to them, it's going to be Okay. 
And then what happens is that Jesus is kind of shouting back out. You can imagine the service is interrupted. This woman starts praising God in the middle of the whole thing. Oh, we can't have, see, we can't. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, I'm just saying. Look, this place has to be a place of healing and strength and peace. And we have to embody Christ so we can go unbend the world. But most significantly in our outline this morning, Jesus says to her, to them, she's a daughter of Abraham, and he restores her into the community. So when people walk through that door, we must, we must restore them to community because many people come bent over from the weight of the world and need to come to this place of healing. And then in our outline this morning, what does she do? She gives praise. She glorifies God, and the people are restored with her. They realize the crazy, crazy making stuff that goes on also when we have too many rules and regulations. Now, I don't want you guys coming up to me afterwards saying, well, we don't have to do this, and we don't have to do that. <laughs> don't just draw the line here a little bit. But when someone comes in here that doesn't look like us, or they don't feel like us. We have to be able to be welcoming and to be unbending ourselves to whatever they bring with them. The world needs to be unbent right now. And we can be the people that listen and learn and try to talk to another sanely. We can reach out and say, it's okay. We can be the healers in the world. Now, I want to take this one opportunity this morning. It's been on my heart for a couple days reading this scripture. I couldn't let go of it, so I'm going for it. If you have ever, ever been hurt by the church, as an agent of the church, I stand before you and ask for forgiveness. And I'm reaching out to hopefully heal you of that pain. And I promise you, I will never, ever extend that pain to you if you have gone through something with the church. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. Amen. <laughs>